Hi everyone, today it's time for me to take a closer look at the six titles I'm going to be reading for SPFB08. So first of all, if you're here, I'm guessing that you know what SPFBO is, but if you don't, rather than going through it myself, I'll leave a link in the description box below to Mark Lawrence's blog, where he explains it all, and you can also find a rundown of the current competition on there, including all of the titles that are involved for the 10 different blogs, and any titles that have already had a review, and or been cut from the competition. So I'm really thrilled to be involved in SPFB08. It's a competition that I've kept a kind of a rough eye on over the last few years, but starting with SPFB07, I really started to take closer note of the titles involved, who was doing well, who wasn't, looking at the reviews and getting really excited for the books in the final. So when I was asked by Bookborn, who's one of my favourite booktubers, to join a group of other booktubers in reading some of her titles and putting forward a semi-finalist for her to then put forward her finalist, I was over the moon. It was an opportunity that I didn't think I would get at any point. I never thought that I would be involved in judging for SPFBO, but I'm determined to enjoy what involvement I do have. So out of the 30 titles allocated to Bookborn, I was really lucky to get six titles that I think could be quite a good fit for my reading taste. And in fact, two of these I was definitely going to be reading anyway, regardless of my involvement in SPFBO, because I already had them on my list and in fact already had a copy on my Kindle of both of these books. So that was an absolute win because it just gave me the opportunity to bring them forward and get those books read. So what I'm going to do today is run through some details for each of these books, including the full synopsis, and I'll also show the cover for each of these books as well. I'm going to run through them in alphabetical order. So the first one up is The Blood of Outcasts by D.A. Smith. This is book one of the Bane Sword Saga. At the moment, at the time of filming, it's got a 4.13 average rating on Goodreads from 24 ratings and has got 10 reviews so i'll be adding one to each of those in the near future this is a book that's listed as being 510 pages and it was first published not too long ago just on the 18th of may 2022 synopsis for this one reads what if spilling your own blood was the only way to save yourself masako escapes the lord council with only her life intact her clan shattered and master dead in the wake of disaster she wrought it is her cursed blood that cries out and a god's born that answers by the power in her blood and a promise made with it she's given a second chance with it she must unite the outer clans move past old rivalries and worse or face annihilation at the hand of a foreign sect of sorcerers the tau si and their silent invasion only masako was executed she's meant to be dead demonic rumors and a destructive past sow doubt in her campaign before it's begun so this one sounds really interesting anyway. I really love the cover for it. It's one that when I loaded this on my Kindle as part of the competition and saw that the cover had been refreshed, we decided that actually we all quite liked it and we moved it forward as one of our picks for the cover competition that comes along with SPFBO. I haven't done too many Japanese inspired fantasies, but it's not something that I'm unfamiliar with. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. And I'm kind of getting from this a, a bit of a best serve cold vibe where you've got a female warrior who's battered and beaten and presumed dead. And then she goes all out on a mission of revenge. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this one goes. And it's the first title that I'm going to be reading for my part of the competition. Next up, I've got Depriel's Fools by Michael D'Angelo. This one has a 4.75 average rating from four ratings and four reviews. It's listed as 471 pages and was published on the 16th of October 2021. Synopsis reads, turning fools into gold. When all heroes have been taken, the fools will have to do. Frederick D'April is a warrior on a mission to right the wrongs of his country. When he finds himself outnumbered by the Ebon Hammer, he knows that he needs help from unlikely places. He isn't expecting the mad wizard Bixby Aladocious to live up to his name. Together, Warrior and Wizard set out on a quest to bring new heroes battling with self-doubt and fear in a world that doesn't take kindly to people with strange blessings like the strain. But united, they believe they can finally stand up to the tyranny taking hold in the nation of Black Lane. 
Now, I've not seen anything of it before, but this one appears to be part of an expanded fantasy universe uh, called Telest. There are a handful of other stories available. There's a short story collection, for instance, with four different authors, I think it is, of which Michael D'Angelo is one of those. With that one, it does give a bit of information about the world. Uh, you can enter a world where magic permeates the very air that people breathe. Telest is a place where the country is as vast and beautiful as it is dangerous. The cities are wondrous and brimming with possibilities, and everything in between is touched by an otherworldly quality. So I do like the sound of that. I like the idea as well that if I get on with this book, there's a whole new world to explore. I don't know how many stories are involved, but it's a nice little prospect for me. The third title is Fire of the Forebears, book one of Heritor's Helm by L.A. Buck. This has got a 3.91 average rating from 11, and there's 12 reviews on there, so I don't know how that works out. Maybe one of those reviews is the author review or something along those lines. Uh, it's listed as 634 pages, so this is the longest book that I've got in my selection, I believe. Published on the 22nd of February, 2022. Pitted against one another with the people and the country they love in jeopardy, the daughter of a deserter and the son of a king have a chance to fulfil their forebear's legacy or destroy it entirely. Twisted monsters called Sarja lurk in the shadows of the mountains. Rumours say the Fidelis, human wielders of an ancient elemental magic, again walk the plains. Not all in Avaron believe, and not all welcome the return of legend. Cura's a sceptic, but she'll cross and befriend centaurs, talking animals and worse to save her family after the rebellion mistakes her for the land's prophesied saviour. And while he'd rather negotiate with rebels and fight them, Tristan can't ignore prophecy. That was the sham his father used to steal the crown in the first place. Over a century ago, their ancestors sailed the oceans in search of peace and died as heroes fighting for it. But heroes and villains aren't always what they seem to be. So this one I was actually offered a review copy by the author just before it was released and sadly I didn't get around to reading it before the book actually came out. So I was really pleased to see that it came up in the selection that we had and immediately grabbed it as one of my six. It's another one that I really like the cover for. It's both simple and detailed depending on how closely you look at it and overall I think it's just got a really nice design for a fantasy book cover. Book four on my list is I Shall Return With Winter by C.F. Wellburn. This one's got a 4.67 average rating from 45. It's also got 33 reviews. It's listed as 350 pages and was published on the 5th of October 2021. So this one's the one I think with the most reviews out of all of the, or the most ratings certainly, out of all of the books that are on my list. And it's very close to having the highest average rating out of those as well. Defy fate, defy gods, defy everyone. When Oban's farm is sacked by barbarians, he journeys into the godless north on a deadly quest for revenge. But his enemies are full of surprises and his endurance and faith are pushed to their limits. He becomes an unwitting pawn in their ancient prophecy, one which predicts he will deliver his homeland into their hands. If Oban is to see his family again, he must prove the prophecy wrong while exacting vengeance on a people to whom he grows more bound. So this one sounds interesting and I'm kind of getting a bit of a cold from the north vibe where you've got a similar sounding setting. I'm not sure whether it's quite as cold as cold from the north but we've got north and we've got I shall return with winter as the name so it does sound like it's going to be that kind of northern setting. We've got a home being sacked leading to a quest for vengeance that's tied with prophecy so I'm really looking forward to that and seeing if that high average rating rings true for me. This one says that it's perfect for fans of dark gritty epic fantasy so fingers crossed it's going to be right up my street. Moving on, book five on my list is A Phantom's Vengeance, book one of The War of the Unborn by Marco Mitzi. This one's got an average rating of 4.38 from 13. It's got 11 reviews. It's 404 pages and was published on the 25th of November 2021. The kingdom of Masander is embroiled in civil war. High Lord Shorid of Melktown has risen against his brother King Marnel, conquering the entire south in less than a year. With armies growing stronger every day, he's now set his sights north, ever closer to Kaposia, Masander's capital and the king's home city. For now, Marnel can breathe relief after his army manages to defeat an enemy force in the northwest. Danio, a soldier in the king's army, has survived the battle and is now returning home to Kaposia to his wife and daughter. 
However, a fate worse than falling in battle awaits him within the safety of the capital, as he inadvertently stumbles upon a treasonous plan leading to deceit, danger, tragedy, and ultimately a quest for vengeance. So it was a fair bit going on in that synopsis, and I'm not sure entirely kind of what the focus is going to be, whether it's the uh, kind of the war and the open rebellion, or whether it's going to be more this treacherous plot and maybe uh, an underground rebellion waiting to be sparked. Either way, I like both of those aspects of it, so this is one that hopefully is going to be a good match for me. And then the sixth book on my list is The Souls Aspect, book one of The Aspect by Mark Holloway. This one's got a 4.44 average rating from 36 and it's got 22 reviews. It's 364 pages and was published on the 16th of August 2021. A healer is forced to become a killer for an empire that would grind his country to dust. Calum, the sickly son of a widowed physician, has devoted his life to learning his father's craft. Wanting to finally step out of his father's shadow, he embarks on a project of his own, seeking out the help of Femia, the town's newly arrived alchemist and a rare wielder of magic. But Femia has secrets of her own, secrets carried from the heart of the empire itself. Secrets that would steal Calum away from his home and into the Empire's Academy for Magic users. The Assail Academy beckons, but can Calum survive the Academy? And if so, what would he have to become? So with this one, I'm not entirely sure kind of what to expect. It's got a magic school by the sounds of it, which is not one of my favourite kind of tropes, but that is based really on a couple of recent bad experiences. So it can be something that I enjoy, or at least what I get along fine with, if it's done well. And I'm hoping that's what I'll get here if it does turn out that we spend a fair bit of time in a magical school setting. I'm quite intrigued by the alchemical magic kind of prospect and also the secrets from the Empire and how that all intertwines with the various little bits in that synopsis. So overall, I'm really excited to see where this one goes. So those are the six books that I'm going to be reading over the next couple of months for my pod in phase one of SPF BO8. Let me know in the comments down below which ones of these you like the sound of the most, or of course if you've read any of these and what you thought of them. Once again, I'll leave some SPF BO8 links in the description box down below. Go and check those out to find out more about the competition. You can also find all of my social media and support the channel links down there, including my book club discord and my Patreon. That's it for today though, I hope to see you again in another video soon, but until then as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books, bye for now.